Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Roly Reacts, back again today with another video. Uh, today I'm doing the uh, review for episode 3 of Ahsoka. And uh, another good episode, another solid week for the show. Uh, definitely moving the story along and getting story plots and elements to get to the bigger scheme of things. I loved um, how the episode starts, even though it starts out at a slow pace and that bothers me. Because, I mean, th there was a training sequence at the very beginning of the episode, and it lasted about a good seven to eight minutes of the episode. Now, this episode right here, it clocked in at like 37, 38 minutes. But after the credits and the recap and all that, you're really left with like 31, 32 minutes. And I feel like they took too long with the training sequence. Even though it was necessary, it will help people that haven't watched other shows with Ahsoka and Sabine and don't really know their relationship. I understand that they need to build on that and the importance of it. You know, it was it was great uh, for a Star Wars nerd like myself. It's awesome. But if you look at somebody that's not really into Star Wars, my wife, you know, she knocked out within a matter of seconds. I mean, she was just like boring, you know, within a few minutes she was done. So I was like, oh, my God, how are we going to keep the viewership up on this show if, uh, you know, the average Joe that's watching it and checking in is just going to be like, oh, my God, this is so boring. So <laughs> but I loved the training sequence. Um, I felt like it was uh, very Kung Fu like a master teaching his apprentice the ways of Kung Fu how to be calm and uh, calculated with all your moves. It, re it really had, uh, you know, hints of those old Kung Fu movies as well as uh, some stuff from Cobra Kai. And then even the music in the background. I mean, it felt like I was at P.F. Chang's <laughs> getting, you know, some, some dinner. Uh, but uh, I also like how it was a callback to episode four. At first, it kind of bothered me because I'm like, oh, my God, every time with these new shows and these new episodes, they're going for that uh, nostalgic feel. They're trying to get people uh, sucked in with that. Like, oh, look at that. Luke did that. And now, you know, they're doing it here. But, you know, eventually it did work. And it was a callback to episode four where Obi-Wan was training Luke and and I definitely uh, liked how it ended up, you know, um, it's part of the process for Sabine to get ready for the threat that's coming. And, um, you know, she's not doing well. You know, the droid says as much Huang that was training her, the Jedi protocol droid. Um, you know, he's basically like, hey, man, you're not ready. You know, like you're just far from ready. But uh, the conversation that Ahsoka has with Sabine um, by the way, I want to get that table for my house. I mean, that thing looks sick. You know what I mean? Comes right up from under the floor, but that's beyond the point. <laughs> um, I, I just feel like the conversation that Ahsoka has with Sabine is classic Star Wars. You know, it's life lessons. It's stuff that we could all apply to our day to day lives. Um, you know, she's not, uh, uh, Sabine is frustrated at that point because she's not feeling the force. She's not getting the hang of things and she just feels like she's failing. And Ahsoka tells her, listen, man, you know, this doesn't come overnight. This doesn't get handed to you. It's not going to fall out of the sky and jump in your lap. I mean, she even says, uh, such a great line, uh, where, you know, she's like training and focus are what truly defines someone's success. I mean, isn't that the, the, the fact, you know, I fall victim of this as well. I think most of us do, you know, I want, uh, things to happen in my life or, uh, I always question why am I not here? Why am I still kind of stuck here? And a lot of times if I reflect and I'm honest with myself, it's because I haven't put in the work, you know, um, I haven't put in the dedication, the blood, sweat and tears that it takes to do this. So I love that. And that's one of my favorite things about Star Wars is that they always have these very pivotal uh, moments and uh, life lessons that we could apply in our own lives. She even flexes on Sabine. She says, you know, not everyone has the discipline to master the ways of the force. That was very Yoda-esque, you know, that it shows Ahsoka's maturity. It shows that she's been through it. She knows what it takes to be a successful Jedi. You know, so I like that she told her that. I like that, you know, Sabine is having this struggle. This power is just not coming to her within one or two scenes or even this one episode. It's going to take her time. She's really got to find herself, dig deep within and work hard to become this Jedi that she wants to be. So I, I love that. You know, it's not like in the sequel trilogy where Rey, 
you know, we saw her in like three, four scenes and she became a Jedi and she was like super powerful. And yeah, you could argue she was a Palpatine or whatnot, but come on, bro. Like, you know, it takes more than that. It takes, uh, they get these people from younglings to train. Like this is not going to come overnight. You really, you know, everybody's able to be a Jedi. Uh, and this is something that George Lucas put out there, but every, everybody's able to do that. But it's going to take your part as well, just like anything in life. So I love that. Um, I love the droid, Huang. Uh, I, I think that's how you say it. But uh, he just has a lot of charisma. He's funny. He's the right amount of funny for Star Wars. He's not over the top like some Marvel or DC um, you know, shows. And just he's brutally honest. You know, He tells Sabine straight up, you're not ready. You know? And you're not even at the standard that you need to be to become a Jedi. So you know, I don't think we should even go forward with this. And you know, obviously Ahsoka is going to be patient. It also shows another level of her maturity where she's now patient. And she's going to work with Sabine. Uh, you know, she's going to also give it to her straight like Huang, but she's going to be more patient and, um, you know, uh, more forgiving, just like Anakin was to her. So I love that. You know, a lot of people doubted her and he always stu stu stood up for her and, you know, was there to champion her. So I love that. Um, uh, then we move on to uh, Hera. You know, she speaks with the council. You have Mon Mothma there leading the council. She's now the supreme leader. No, not the supreme leader. The uh, she's she took over Palpatine. So, you know, the the supreme chancellor, and um, she has a squad with her there. And Hera's bringing it to their attention. Hey, there's these imperial loyalists out there. Uh, there's you know they work out, they work for us, but they're still loyal to the empire. And we have reason to believe that, you know, they're working to get Thrawn here, you know, and be a threat to us. And the council's like, what? You know, this is unbelievable. And uh, that's when this other senator, uh, Siono, I think his name is, the Asian guy, uh, you know, he steps in and he starts, you know, putting uh, Hera down. You know, he's like, are you sure this is not because you want to find your friend Ezra? You know, sorry to tell you, but he probably died along with Thrawn and you know you're going to waste our resources which is understandable but I mean she just told you we have um, uh, imperial loyalists that are still out there and they're delivering this battery or this like supercharged thing uh, to to go help uh, Morgan you know so I mean what more do you want you know I have that solid evidence plus I'm telling you I think he's still out there, but this guy keeps going back, back and forth. And he keeps saying, you know, it's her emotions. She's, uh, imagining this not to waste their resources. And, you know, after this line that she says to him, she basically tells him like, were you in the war? Were you, um, ever on the front lines where, you know, you had to do this or did you just sit in the background and see who came on top? And when she said that line and he stood quiet, that made me think right there. I'm like, this guy is a bad dude. You know what I mean? He's probably an inside guy for Thrawn. He's on the council here. And, you know, Thrawn is super calculated from the novels and even the show. So it wouldn't be far-fetched to assume that. But, um, you know, I just, I, that right there, you know, she basically called him a sellsword and she put him out on blast. He had really nothing to say. So, you know, and especially him kind of shutting her down and trying to, you know, diffuse the situation. That's another reason it makes me think that that's one of Thrawn's inside men. Next, we move on to the space battle. Um, it's classic Star Wars, you know, dog fights in the air and them trying to escape from the bad dudes. And it's pretty awesome. And uh, they really get you worried for them, at, you know, at a certain point there after they've discovered this um, the hyperspace ring. Uh, they're really in a in a moment there where you feel like they're in danger and they're not going to make it out of this situation. You know, you got Huang, he fr he overheated or fried or whatever like that. He can't help them. And they, they basically have to figure it out on their own and worry about the immediate threat right now. Not really worry about him. Try and get out of this mess. So, uh, you know, Ahsoka getting on the wing, getting out of, into space and getting on that wing. I've seen uh, several videos today where people are just like upset about that or they feel like that's cheesy and too far fetched. And I won't lie, when I first saw it, you know, and my wife had woken up at that point. But like when we both saw it, we looked at each other and we were like, come on, it was like an eye roller. But then, you know, I remembered those episodes from Clone War, or one episode from Clone Wars where Plo Koon did the same thing. You know, he was uh, stranded out there. He was with his squad and uh, these droids were looking for them and, you know, trying to get rid of them for General Grievous. 
uh, because they had some information or whatever. But in that episode, he came out there. He was floating out there fighting droids in space and he didn't have no suit on. You know, at least here, you know, they have it to a little bit more realistic. You know, you have Ahsoka in the suit. Um, you know, and her losing kind of control and floating out into space and Sabine having to get her back on. But I, I, I didn't have a problem with it, you know, after thinking about that. And then also it looked cool when she sliced that wing with the lightsaber. I mean, that effect was pretty awesome. Um, you know, some people also have a problem with like gravity. Like how was she moving so fast? Come on, man. It's Star Wars. You know, it's not real life. I mean, some of the stuff is going to be a bit exaggerated. So I, I didn't really have a problem with it. It wasn't super cheesy. It wasn't like the Leia thing in, uh, what was it, Last Jedi? It wasn't like that, you know, where Leia turned into Superwoman and was flying through the stars. <laughs> Thank God, you know, because that, if it would have done that again, that would have been like, come on, man. These people are just ridiculous. But they didn't do that, and it wasn't cheesy, and it didn't bother me. I liked it. Um, after that whole battle, you know, they descend to the planet and, uh, it's, it's super dope what we see. We see the space whales from rebels that Ezra was like kind of communicating and learning about. Uh, we see them on that planet floating through the sky. I'm sure they're going to, you know, have something to do going forward, maybe with finding Ezra or whatnot, who knows, but they get down to the planet and, uh, this is the same planet, uh, Balin, he's guarding the key and that he's on. And uh, beautiful planet, by the way, you have that forest with the red leaves. Pretty awesome. But uh, I feel, you know, in this next episode, it's going to be a callback, you know, probably paying homage to um, uh, Return of the Jedi, you know, when they're looking for like the base that basically controls that that uh, that hyperspace ring. And they're going to try and destroy it so that they can't leave. But during that, what I hope to see is I hope to see Ahsoka and Sabine uh, have a showdown with those two Inquisitors, you know, the blonde chick and the guy with the mask. And I'm hoping that uh, Ahsoka fights the guy with the mask and somehow unmasks him or, you know, they have some type of conversation to where they reveal he's Starkiller, hopefully, or a, a character inspired by Starkiller, meaning, you know, he trained with Vader. He was uh, Vader's kind of apprentice for a while and it would just be cool to see Ahsoka and him fight and, you know, their styles, which are probably similar because if they were trained by the same person, Anakin, Vader, Vader, Anakin, uh, you know, and, and to see how the two different styles uh, have changed too, you know, they'll both, they'll be aggressive and it'll be an awesome duel, I think, but it'll just be cool to see how his light side training was as opposed to his dark side training. You know, there's going to be some similarities there, but I think that that would be a cool story point. And um, I've been hearing people say that it's probably Ezra turned bad. I don't think so. And I really hope not. I rather, you know, the two apprentices of Anakin Vader battle it off and that'll be an interesting battle. Uh, at the end there, you know, I think she's going to end up beating the guy, the dark side guy, maybe because in the trailer she gets to Balin or unless that happens before, who knows? But I love the end shot with Balin. I mean, uh, he's ordering his minions to go through the forest, find Ahsoka, find Sabine and, you know, take him out, you know? Um, but the look on his face when he turns around and you see that conflict and, and almost like a callback you know, of him reflecting on, man, I, you know, this is what I once stood for, this heroism that Ahsoka is doing, this determination to do good. And uh, what I think and what I, or actually what I hope happens is that, you know, he has a turning point where he turns good and his apprentice gets mad, the blonde chick. I hope she gets like mad and maybe kills him. You know what I mean? That would be crazy, you know, because I don't know, it seems like they're not fully Sith or they're not fully Inquisitors Maybe they're just uh, gray Jedi. Who knows what they are? They haven't really explained that here. But it would be interesting if, like, maybe Balin turned bad and he kind of convinced her to join him bad. And now he's turning good again. And then she's like, what? I changed my whole life for you and kind of kills him. I don't know. I think that would be a cool story plot. And, uh, you know, obviously with the, the, the late great actor, he passed away. I don't know how he could go forward. So I'm wondering if they have some type of resolution like that, you know, where he turns good and, you know, maybe she, she takes him out. 
But I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I think the episode was solid. I think it moved the plot forward. And um, I can't wait now to see next week's episode. I think that's where it's kind of going to go down. It's going to be the mid-season finale. And uh, I think there's going to be a lot of battles and a lot at stake to, uh, you know, definitely move us into the the second half of this season. Uh, comment down below. Let me know. Let's have a discussion about it. I'm curious to see what you guys think, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, um, what you hope happens or what you think is going to happen. And uh, yeah, these are my thoughts uh, until next week, guys. Uh, share this with your friends. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, let's geek out about this, man. I mean, Star Wars is in a pretty good place, I think, you know. So we'll see how it all turns out. But as of now, we're in good standings. All right, guys. Well, I'll talk to you next week and have a good one.